The fourth item I want to talk about is gravitational waves, uh, which have now been seen uh, by BICEP2 just a few months ago. The announcement was made on March 17th of this year. So along with density perturbations, uh, inflation also predicts gravitational waves. And again, it's a quantum phenomena. The point is that quantum effects on very short length scales uh, will mean that the geometry itself, of space itself will be constantly fluctuating. Uh, and normally, this is confined to incredibly short length scales and totally invisible to us, but part of our theory of quantization of gravity. Uh, what inflation does is it stretches these quantum fluctuations to very large scales, which is essentially the same thing that happens with the density perturbations that I talked about earlier. Uh, and therefore, these fluctuations now become macroscopic enough to actually have measurable consequences. So the gravitational waves uh, perturb, these gravitational waves are produced during inflation. Um, now this cosmic background radiation that we look at was, as I said earlier, released at about 380,000 years after the Big Bang. Uh, but the gravitational waves uh, created at the time of inflation can transfer their influence to the cosmic microwave background radiation uh, by causing uh, disturbances in the plasma that fills the universe at that time. Uh, and the result is that it imprints its patterns uh, onto the cosmic microwave background. Uh, if you're only measuring the, un the unpolarized radiation, that is, if your detectors are not polarization sensitive, uh, you cannot really see directly the effects of the gravity waves. But it turns out that if you can measure the polarization of the cosmic background radiation, and then, of course, we're talking about measuring the fluctuations in the polarization of the cosmic microwave background radiation. Uh, then you can see specific signs uh, which, as far as primordial sources are concerned, can only be created uh, by gravity waves. Uh, and those are called the B modes. The, the other modes are E modes, where E and B uh, refer to analogies between electric and magnetic fields. Um, uh, e modes can be produced by density perturbations, uh, but only uh, Gravity waves can produce B modes. Uh, so these B modes were discovered uh, in a very widely touted uh, news conference on March 17th of this year. Uh, the discovery is spectacular, uh, but I have to admit that since the original discovery, other groups of physicists have looked more carefully at the possibilities of contamination of the signal by foreground sources that is, sources close to us, like, for example, dust in our own galaxy. Uh, and right now, it's somewhat uncertain whether these results are going to hold up or not. Uh, OK, so um, these gravity waves, if they're real, have often been called the smoking gun of inflation, uh, mainly because they're harder to produce from other kinds of uh, theories that people might invent uh, than the density perturbations, for example, are. Uh, so as far as we know now, at the present time at least, there are really no other theories uh, that predict gravity waves other than inflation. Um, assuming that these gravity waves might be real, they are incredibly important uh, to our understanding of physics as a whole and not just inflation. Uh, in particular, uh, these gravity waves uh, or the gravity waves as seen in the cosmic background radiation would really be the first time we've ever actually seen a gravity wave at all. Uh, previously, we've seen clear evidence for energy loss due to what we think are gravity waves. Uh, in binary pulsar systems, uh, we can see binary pulsars uh, lose energy through gravitational radiation. And the amount of energy loss agrees very, very well with what you would calculate from general relativity as the expected energy loss due to gravitational radiation. Uh, so in that sense, the existence of gravitational radiation seems to be confirmed, uh, but that's not a direct confirmation of what a gravity wave actually looks like, uh, which we would be seeing for the first time uh, in the cosmic microwave background radiation uh, through these polarization measurements uh, as done by the BICEP2 team. Uh, in addition, uh, if these observations are corroborated, uh, they would also be, in fact, the first direct experimental evidence that we have uh, I don't need the word direct there. It's really the first evidence that we have, uh, first experimental evidence that we have, that gravity is quantized at all. Uh, now, this is not a big surprise to most theorists. We've always thought that gravity must be 
quantized because we don't really see any easy way that we can imagine uh, to have classical gravity interacting with a quantum description of matter. So for the consistency of the whole picture, um, almost all physicists believe that gravity needs to be quantized. Uh, but this would be the first direct evidence, first evidence that we actually see experimentally uh, that gravity is quantized. Next, uh, another important feature of this observation, if, it's, if it can be corroborated, uh, is that it gives us our first handle on the energy scale at which inflation took place, or maybe more precisely at what the expansion rate of the universe was at the time of inflation. Believe it or not, we don't know that number, and there's a range of maybe even more, more than 10 orders of magnitude of what that number might be. The gravity waves pin that down because the intensity of the gravity waves that you see depends really only on the expansion, which is just pulling these gravity waves uh, from microscopic scales to macroscopic scales. Uh, so the uh, strength of what you see ends up really just depending entirely on the expansion rate. Uh, so seeing these B modes is really a direct measurement of the expansion rate of the universe at the time of inflation, uh, which we don't know. Uh, if the measurement of the BICEP2 team holds up, uh, then that tells us what the energy scale was for the universe. The uh, energy density of the universe, V, V stands for potential energies, potential energy density. Uh, we always work in units where H bar and C are one, so this factor doesn't do anything. Uh, but if you don't use units where h bar and c are 1, there has to be a factor of h bar c cubed here. Uh, this number to the 1 quarter power is an actual energy, which we think of as being the energy scale of inflation. Uh, and with r equal to 0 0.2, r being the ratio of the power in gravitational perturbations to the power in density perturbations, just think of r as a measure of the intensity of the gravity waves. Uh, so r over 0 0.2 would be 1. If the Measurement is exactly as originally stated. Uh, so this would say that the energy density of the universe at the time of inflation was characteristic of an energy scale of 2.2 times 10 to the 16th GeV, which happens to be exactly the energy scale of grand unified theories. Uh, so if it's right, it's a very interesting piece of evidence uh, that grand unified theories might be correct and might be intimately connected to inflation. So I have one more slide about implications of gravity waves. Um, one of the nice implications from my own point of view uh, is that if this result is corroborated, uh, it rules out certain alternative ideas to inflation, and in particular, the cyclic ekparotic model, which you may or may not have heard of. If you haven't, that's okay with me. But uh, if you have, this would rule it out if it holds up. Um, this paragraph mentions that the value obtained for R uh, by the BICEP2 team was actually already in conflict with lower values of R that have been set as limits by other experiments, and in particular both Planck and WMAP, these two satellite experiments that measured the cosmic background radiation. Now, neither of those experiments measured the polarization. The, what I'm quoting now from both WMAP and Planck come only from measuring the radiation without looking at the polarization. Uh, but without looking at the polarization, you could ask yourself how much B-mode contribution could there be just given the total? The B-modes add to the total radiation that you expect to see. Uh, and based on that, uh, these groups have set limits uh, that R should be less than 0.11. They both came up with the same limit. Uh, and the measurement by the BICEP2 team of R equals 0.2 is larger than that. So that's one of the issues that needs to be resolved, uh, and it's certainly part of the overall issue of how much of what the BICEP2 team saw really is primordial radiation and how much might be due to other sources of contamination. Uh, now, if these observations are correct, uh, it really is only the beginning of the excitement because once one can see these B modes, evidence of gravi gravitational waves, uh, one has a whole new handle on astronomy to explore. Uh, that is, one wants to measure next how the intensity of these B modes depend on their wavelength uh, to get a curve comparable to what I showed you for the density perturbations. Uh, and it's just as exciting as the first curve. Uh, and there's a fantastic amount of new information to be gleaned there. And what it would tell us uh, is how the expansion rate of the universe varied during the inflationary process, which really pins down the details of the inflationary mechanism, which could be very, very interesting. 